There are places in Bangladesh that flood for up to eight months of the year. Can you imagine what that must be like? I can barely stand the drizzle in the UK. For centuries though, villages here have just about managed. Until now. I'm going somewhere that could hold the key to helping millions living on floodplains all over the world adapt, survive and thrive. It's a beautiful day today and a beautiful day for a boat trip. We're going to be spending about an hour and a half actually from here in northeastern Bangladesh in the Shunamganj region going to somewhere that is incredibly remote. We're talking about somewhere in the Hoa region that gets completely isolated during the wet season, during the monsoons. Jarakona is a village in the Haor region, right at the border with India. It's surrounded on three sides by rains that wash down from the foothills of the Himalayas. It's beautiful here. The air is cool and fresh, even in 30 degrees heat. This is absolutely insane. It's amazing to learn that this region exports a lot of sand all around the country. The guys were just telling me that there's a lot of natural resource here, sand, stone, whereas many other places in the country export just stealing fish and rice. This place also has a very good sand and stone market, which means it is really good for its economy, but the fact is it's just so isolated, so that's part of the problem. The area is blessed with natural resources and fertile land, but people here struggle because of the flooding. For generations, each family's had to pay hundreds of pounds each year to build shabby flood defences that constantly break. It's holding them back in so many ways. Before, it used to be uh, rudimentary defences made by the villagers themselves. Um, it would buy them time, but not enough. and there'd always be fighting to keep the land. So we are here. Let's get off. Oh. A crowd gathers as we arrive and I can't lie, it feels a bit like I'm a celebrity. But I've come to hear their story though. So it's time to listen to the village elders talk. Nana, our boys, our boys, our আমার <laughs> The farmers only have a few days to harvest their crops when the rains come. A whole season's food depends on a few days. It's high stakes and they get stressed about it, along with everything else like money or if their houses will survive. 2004 was one of the worst. Another elder remembers being my age and having to stay awake on the night's watch while everyone else slept. His job was to raise the alarm if the flooding started. I suddenly feel self-conscious at all my privilege. Here, there are no insurance schemes or safety nets. This is life or death, survival or ruin. 
Families fall into massive debt to rebuild their houses after big floods with promises to lenders they'll pay it back with next year's crop money. The most moving story I heard happened in 2017. The flooding was so bad that year that all the crops were destroyed. People had to choose whether to feed their families or protect their homes. But in 2020, things changed. IFAD and the local government spent around $100,000 to help the villagers here build a solid defence wall. Since then, instead of moving away, younger people in the village actually want to stay. Lovely to meet you. What's your name? Sabir Ahmed. Sabir Ahmed. Do you want to go to the village? Yes. Do you want to go to the village? Yes. Do you want to go to the village? Yes. Do you want to go to the village? শিক্ষার যে গুণগত মান বাড়ছে স্বাস্থ্য খাতেও অনেক ঝুঁকি ছিল ওই টাকাটা দিয়ে আমরা অনেক কিছু করতে পারতেছি আগের চাইতে অনেক কিছু আমাদের এই যোগাযোগের জন্য মানে প্রত্যেকটা ঘরের সাথে এখন ফ্যামিলির সাথে যোগাযোগ আছে প্রত্যেকটা পরিবারের সাথে আমাদের স্কুল মসজিদ মাদ্রাসাতে যাইতে খুব মানে বা ইয়ে আগে প্যাক কাদা ছিল যাইতে পারতাম না এখন এই রাস্তাটা হওয়ার কারণে এখন সবাই যাইতে পারতেছি খুব নিরাপদে ইউ নো সামটাইমস হোয়েন উই টক অ্যাবাউট ক্লাইমেট চেঞ্জ উই ফরগেট দ্যাট ইটস নট জাস্ট অ্যাবাউট মানি এন্ড হাউজিং বাট অ্যাবাউট পিপলস লাইভস টু দ্য ফ্রিডম টু ডু হোয়াটএভার দে ওয়ান্ট পরিবেশ দূষণ ছিল পানি কাদা কাদা ছিল পানি আটকে থাকতো মানে পাই জোর থাকতো পানি এখন ওইটা হয় না খুব সুন্দর মানে পরিবেশও খুব সুন্দর এবং এটা বর্ষাতে খুব একটা দৃষ্টিনন্দন জায়গা হয় ইটস গন ফ্রম ওয়ান অফ দ্য ওয়ার্স্ট এফেক্টেড এরিয়াস ইন দ্য হাও টু ওয়ান অফ দ্য সেফেস্ট পিপল হিয়ার আর হ্যাপি দে আর আর্নিং মোর মানি দে আর লিভিং বেটার লাইভস এন্ড দ্যাস অ্যাকচুয়ালি বিন আ বুম অফ পিপল ওয়ান্টিং টু মুভ হিয়ার ফ্রম এলসওয়্যার অনেক দূর দূর দূরান্ত থেকে মানুষ আসে আগে একটা আমাদের যে একটা ইয়া ছিল বিয়ার ইয়া ছিল মানে ওইটাও অনেক সুন্দর আগের চাইতে অনেক ইয়ে হয়েছে এবং অন্যান্য গ্রামের চাইতে আমাদের গ্রামটা এখন খুবই সুন্দর আগে অনেকে আসতো না গ্রামের পরিবেশ সে ভালো ছিল না অনেকে আসতো না এখন আগের চাইতে অনেক ভালো বিভিন্ন জায়গা থেকে ওই গ্রামে আসে ফ্যামিলিজ ইন জারাখানা not that a good looking lad like Sabir needs any help finding a bride and clearly we know lots of people like to get married um does that mean that people here have more marriage proposals do you think i mean you you're a good looking guy do you get some marriage proposals here now ji 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 onek beer ekta bepar shapar ache ota to on ager chaite onek unnat so is that the big secret here then just spend thousands of dollars on building big walls not quite The real secret is something called an early warning flash flood system. So the flash flood early warning system can predict a bit in advance uh, what what courses the water might take. So you know for sure how much um, water you can expect. They provide enough time for the villagers to have time to harvest the crops and take it to safety. The system uses satellites and modern tech to model when the heavy rains will hit. When the system's triggered, word spread to the village. No more night watch, no more anxiety, and the farmers have enough time to save most of their crops. The idea came out of a request from a lot of the villagers that they needed something that would give them advance warning. Um 
and then we got a lot of technical help from partners and the local government engineering department was able to implement it. To get the word out as quick as they can, leaders use the mosque. Villagers are used to hearing the call to prayer or azan ring out five times a day. Now, if there's a flood, they hear warnings from the mosque about it as well. Learning about all this has made me really proud, actually. I'm proud that Bangladesh is showing people how they can adapt to climate change. Sabia thinks what happens here needs to happen everywhere. That was an amazing interview and that was such inspiring to speak to these people and, and actually find that this flood defence right here, this thing has now given them security, given them safety, given these kids somewhere that they think will last, you know? It's something we take for granted, I take for granted in the UK that my house is always going to be there, but these lot, every single day they worried that their home was going to wash away. But now, they don't have that worry anymore because they have this flood defence and they know their house is going to be there and this is their family home that's going to be there. And that is something that is really... Yeah, you can't buy that, can you? So, hopefully that's something that, in the future, other villages around here and all across the world will be able to rely on as well. Next time, I'll be finding out about the simple solutions being used here to save people's lives. This is Bangladesh, the climate frontline. If you like this, please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more episodes.